So let's have a lesson on this piece by Molino. Um, it's a little prelude, but it's a pretty exciting one, so I put it at the very end of the book. And uh, if you have the music in a different book, just follow the lesson for free and, and pick up some tips about approaching new pieces. But if you need the music, it's part of my Easy Classical Guitar, Volume 2. And as I was saying, um, it's the final piece in the book. And in terms of the difficulty level, this one's a little bit harder than the other pieces in the book. I wanted to end with kind of a finale, something a little bit more challenging. But none of the chord shapes are that tricky and it's all kind of in this position. I think the thing about it is that you have to practice each um, element of the piece um, separately and for a little while until your technique um, is comfortable with each section. And then piecing it all together shouldn't be too hard if the muscle memory is there. Because there's nothing inherently awkward about any of the shapes or anything like that, but there's just lots of variations and um, there's a few little like oddities in the piece. Um, in terms of like practicing the piece, um, it's not quite as melodic as some pieces. It's more texture oriented. It's very exciting. Lots of activity. Um, but, you know, practicing the melody or the bass line on its own is not as beneficial. Although the bass line is, is pretty secure in this piece. You know, you, you could go over it like that. Um, on another level though, practicing the chord shapes in this piece could be very, very useful. So even starting at bar two there, if you take each quarter note beat, so if you're in eighth notes, that's two notes, and you play them as a chord, then you can just learn the shapes without the texture, right? Same thing with the 16th notes, each quarter note beat, which would sound like this in the piece, but played separately or played as a block chord. arpeggios, practicing them as a chord will teach you the shapes. Until the melodic material, but then you can go back. Um, practicing those chord shapes will just put the muscle memory in your left hand. Um, in terms of right hand fingering, I've listed some. You don't necessarily have to do what I did. Um, I did a little bit of alternation between the thumb and the fingers, but sometimes changing what finger it plays. You could play a lot of this piece just with the thumb and the I finger or thumb and M finger, like, you know. But um, alternating a little bit is, is kind of helpful, so you can follow my fingering on the page. I generally do P, I, at the beginning I throw in an A finger, but when the 16th notes start, P, I, P, M, P, I, P, M, P, I, P, M, P. So um, alternating between these different groups. But nevertheless, as long as you're alternating between the thumb and the fingers, you're not really repeating a finger. So don't be too too hard on yourself um, in terms of that. Just make sure you're regulating the bass voice to the thumb. Let's do a walkthrough of the piece and I'll just mention some things as we go. Start off slow because it starts with 16th notes and then 8th notes and then 16th. So you have to make sure you're thinking about the speed at which you want the 16th notes to be. Otherwise you'll start too fast. I use my thumb for all the bass line at the beginning. This fourth finger um, is useful down here because you're holding a chord. Just make sure your knuckle is brought over so that it can reach it easily. My knuckle's far away, I can't even reach that note. But if my knuckle's here, I can reach the note, no problem. That, that little grace note, just to treat it as like a rolled dyad. You know, instead of a chord, it's just like a rolled item there. Then the arpeggios start soft and crescendo a little bit. Use your third finger there. That way the B can be played on the third string. Just slide those fingers up for that. I mute the bass on the second beat there, so 
So as soon as I play that F, I'll mute the bass and then continue. Keep your first finger locked on the G sharp and just play the F with the second finger. Um, and then you'll be, you'll be moving around with the thumb a little bit. Um, as you can already see, there's lots of different textures in this piece. So that's what I was saying about practicing each one individually. Um, until all the different textures feel comfortable in your hands. So if you're not able to just like sight read through the piece and play it, just practice each individual section until it's comfortable and then move on to the next and eventually you'll have the whole piece. But let's carry on there. Use the sec third finger on A here, which might seem weird. Same principle, we want that available for the F there. So we can hold this chord, but play that melodic material. And then you just have to jump. There, um, start with second finger, but switch to third because of this B that happens. Play three, one for the A minor, and use your fourth finger on the F. Now this is a weird move. This is the um, this is the little I make a note of it on the score, bar fourteen here. I move my second finger down to play the D sharp, which some of you might find a little bit weird and a little bit awkward. The thing is, though, that keeping three one down is very secure. Otherwise, you would have to go like... Um, which you could do, it's just a little bit more activity. Um, either solution is fine. If you're more comfortable like just switching the chord shape into a comfortable chord shape, that's just fine. Just make sure you finesse it really carefully so that you have good sustain. However, um, in this particular... I try to avoid awkward things like, like that. But in this particular case, it's so secure to just keep those fingers down and do one oddity shape, but in the context of a very secure fingering that stays down, right? And then this is the only bar A in the whole book. It's just a little F chord. That's a little bit of a hard um, chord progression there. Practice it as block shapes. Until you know the shapes very securely. But when you actually play it, get one note at a time. And then get the third finger. Um, you can do a little bit of a writ there because it's kind of hard to jump the third finger. So you can just kind of emphasize that bass note. Then like as you switch, just get one note at a time, right? There's no ideal fingering for this passage. It's just chord shapes and arpeggios. So you just try to emphasize that, that first beat, that first bass note on the beat, and then um, uh, try to connect as best as possible. afterwards. So as you can see there's a lot of little there's a lot of things to pay attention to lots of little fingering um, options and, and, and specific fingerings and little changes. So um, take it slow. It's not that hard of a piece but there's a lot going on so you, you'll need to practice it a little bit longer and just be careful about knowing each texture and having your technique secure for each texture 
And then outside of that, um, once you're comfortable with it all, it can be a very exciting piece with lots of um, changes in it and lots of um, opportunities for musicality. Uh, so just take it really slow and, and learn those fingerings. And then when you're ready, you can start um, experimenting with taking some risks.